UFC Vegas 96, we are back in the apex with 12 fights, and I'm going to be giving my quick picks and favorite bets on the entire card. If you want a longer, more in-depth breakdown on this card, check out my video from a couple days ago. Uh, that's where I'm going to be going more in-depth, or you can go to my live tab on my channel and check out this week's episode of Wager Wars. I had Roto Brady and Evan from Fight Numbers. They faced off to see who has the best bets. They gave their favorite bet on every single fight on the card. So definitely check that out. It was a great episode as always. Let's get into this, man. Make sure you leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite bets on this card is. Who your favorite dog, because I do think there's a lot of dogs that are barking this week. Leave a like on the video. It helps out a lot. Yo, turn your post notifications on. It really helps out a lot. I've been seeing that post notification number go way up, so I really appreciate those who have. Uh, definitely do. I have a ton of ton of content including live streams so check that out let's get into this man first fight on the card man we got kong wang taking on victoria leonardo man if you saw wang and and by the way i waited a little bit to do this breakdown because i wanted to see the weigh-ins for a lot of these fights so i was like you know what i did my longer breakdown let's do this right after the weigh-in no reason to do three videos on a little apex card let's get right into this after the weigh-in let's see how these girls look and we saw him wang did the whole joker bit uh respect I mean, I do think she should win the fight. Leonardo's not somebody who's super, you know, has impressed me a lot so far in her career. But this line is just absolutely ridiculous. There's not really anybody who should ever be a 15-to-1 favorite in a cage fight, let alone in a UFC fight, let alone 5-0 and green prospect. You know, she's got striking experience. I get it. She beat Victor, or, or uh... She beat Valentina Shevchenko in a kickboxing match 10 years ago. Okay, we get it. But she should be a favorite. She should be like minus 500. But minus 1500 is absolutely ridiculous. I will be betting Leonardo. I'm going to let the parlay boys bet Wang all the way to like 20 to 1. She's like, Leonardo's like 9 to 1 right now. I'm going to see if I can get 10 to 1. I will be betting that. Let's move on. Next fight, Zygamantas Ramaska taking on Nathan Fletcher. This is a late notice fight. Both these guys were injured on the Ultimate Fighter, and the UFC is going to give him an uh, extra chance. I did see Fletcher. Looked like he might have had a little bit of staff going on in his left arm. I don't know much about that. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, didn't see anybody talking about it, but it was just something I noticed. So maybe I'm off on that. Um, Ramaska had like a, a, I think it was like a facial fracture. And then Fletcher broke his leg in his fight. So both of them, you got to, you know, obviously a broken leg, a little bit more. I think it was his femur too. I don't think it was like a total break, just like a fracture, but still it's very serious. So, you know, I do think Fletcher, you know, I get why he should be the favorite, you know, um, maybe he can go out there and get the takedowns, but I really do think this is a pretty 50-50 fight. I'm tempted to bet Ramoska, but there's a lot of dogs I like on this card a little bit more. I'm actually going to pick Ramoska. Um, especially with that broken leg, man, that's not great, especially if you're training. And then uh, add on if he did have a staff. I already think it's like a 50 50 fight. I'll go with the dog. Give me Ramoska. We move on to the third fight of the night. We got Jose Nunez taking on Jacqueline Cavalcanti. And this is a fight where, again, I like the underdog, man. Like, this is an underdog night, I think. And that first fight of the night, don't get me wrong, I'm not picking Leonardo again. I think Wayne wins. She should be a favorite, but. In this case, you know, maybe I get it. Like, people see on paper, Nunez is tiny for the division. She's not a great grappler. Cavalcante looks like she is working on the grappling, so maybe she's going to come in here and look a lot better. But from what I've seen, she's mostly a striker. And Nunez, she cracks, man. And yeah, she's tiny for the division, but she was fighting at 145, winning fights. Not great competition, but is Cavalcante great competition? We don't, we don't know anything that's told us to see that. You know, she's shown some skills, but against around the same competition as Nunez. So I'm going to take Nunes here to get the upset. I'm going to take her by decision, but I would not be shocked if he landed the, that overhand left and knocked Cavalcanti out or at least hurt her and then could TKO her. But give me the underdog. I will be betting her, but I'm going to let that line keep going, just like the Leonardo fight and another fight or two on this card. Um, I'm just going to let that line keep coming my way, but it will be a bet. Next up, speaking of which, we got Vladishev Borshev taking on James Yontop. I'm on the underdog here, man. <laughs> like, you guys know me, man. Like, and don't get me, I'm about to pick some favorites, don't worry. But I do think, uh, you know, this is another underdog here, man. Um, I think Yontop should be the favorite. I get why Borshev, people are thinking of two strikers. Borshev, high-level striker, 200-plus kickboxing matches. I get it, I get it. But from what we've seen in MMA, 
I'm just not a fan. I think Yantop is has the higher ceiling. I think I've seen enough from Borshev. Maybe he can get this win, but at best you could tell me this is 50-50 and you're giving me you're going to give me plus 200 on Yantop. Yep, I'll be betting him. I'll be betting Leonardo and I'll be betting Nunes. But whereas I don't think Leonardo wins, it's just a value like the line is ridiculous. I think Yantop and Nunes do win and at best they are 50-50 fights. So give me Yantop and let's move on to this next fight. We got Jose Medina taking on Zachary Reese. <laughs> this is crazy, man, because again, I, I this is one where, you know, I do think Zach Reese should be a decent favorite. You know, um, he is definitely got the finishing potential here. Medina hasn't shown a lot of technique, a lot of skill. He basically got signed off toughness. And I do think Zach Reese should be like a three to one favorite. But I just think, you know, like he's like six to one, seven to one at this point. And it's just like Medina, he's looking like in the Best shape he's ever been in his life. Coming in at a weight class that looks like it suits him a lot more. You know, um, again, if we're if we're changing weight classes and body types and all that, when you're a favorite, it's different. But you know, when you're a huge underdog, man, I had to go ahead and bet him. Man, look, like it's not pretty. This is just a card. It's a low level apex card with a lot of guys who should be favorites, but not as big as they are. And it's people trying to throw them in parlays. And I think Zachary Reese should be the favorite. I'm going to pick him. I think he gets the sub. I think he hurts Medina, maybe to the body and then snatches up the neck. But Medina's tough. He's coming in career best shape and he should be like a plus 250 underdog, not plus 475. So give me Zachary Reese on the win, but the, the bet has got to be Medina, man. Plus 475 on the money line. We move on. Dennis Bazookia taking on Francis Marshall. Or Marshall. Marshall. Um, this is one where it's interesting. Francis coming in as a favorite, even though he's on short notice. I guess everybody's just off the Bazooka train. You know, he did get a win in his last fight. But, you know, in these losses, the Emmers loss, if you lose him, one thing, getting knocked out isn't great. Woodson's legit, man. And, you know, he did kind of run through Matthews. Francis Marshall coming off some loss of his own, you know? Like, he hasn't been looking great. I mean, it's not the worst competition. You know, Dolgarian, legit, especially if he's going to finish you, you know, he can knock you out. And again, Gomi's pretty tough, too. People always kind of crap on Gomi's, but, man, he's, he, he's you know, he wins a lot of, he knows how to win, whether you like his style or not. I think this is a close fight, man. I think this is pretty 50-50. I think Bazookia, you know, I get why everybody's looking to fade him. I swear I haven't seen, like, I think everybody's on Marshall. I'm surprised he's not an even bigger favorite. Dude's coming out on short notice. And, you know, I do think he's pretty pretty solid. Maybe he can get the takedowns. But I think the grappling and the... I think it's a pretty close fight everywhere. I mean, both these guys seem decently well-rounded. Not good, not great anywhere. Just slightly above average everywhere. Um, I think it's a pretty close fight, man. I'm going to go with Dennis Pazukia as another underdog. I, You know, full camp. Solid camp, uh, good training partners. I think he can come in here and get the upset. So, you know, it's a dog card, man. We're going to move on, though. No bet on the Bazooka fight. I really am not looking to trust him. He's not a big enough underdog for me, but we'll move on to this next one. We got Edmund Shabazian taking on Gerald Mearshart. Interesting fight. Two finishers. One guy is a kind of a front runner in Edmund Shabazian. Gerald, I mean, he can get finishes early, too, but tends to kind of just find his spot in the middle middling parts of the fight you know he gets beat up for a little bit and then guys kind of take it down a notch as they're like oh my god he's still not gone and then if he sticks around and they make a mistake and he capitalizes and we've seen Edmund lose a lot of fights like that typically it's the cardio and maybe you know I have seen some people and it has been tempting I was looking at um Edmund by decision it's kind of similar to if you're on the reset side if you're on the re side, I don't hate a decision prop on him because, you know, I do feel like uh, these are two guys, J Reese and Shabazian, where they're going to come in and try to take your head off. And if they don't, you know, they typically are going to slow down and, you know, whereas the finish is going to be on the table for their opponents, Edmund when he's facing higher level competition, and then maybe Reese as he had, does have these step ups. Not that Medina is a huge step up, but, um, you know, maybe you see them try to slow down, but we haven't seen it yet. So it's tough to go off what you haven't seen. If you're going to do that, though, at least you're getting plus 600. And I think both by decision are like plus 600. Shout out to uh, Evan from Fight Numbers on my Wager Wars episode, the live stream this week. He was touching on that. So, um, you know, maybe that's live. Um, so far right now, no bet for me. I do think, oh, wait, no. No, I did lock in right before this. Uh, Mere Shark KO, 19 to 1 on DraftKings. Um, so, you know, uh, 
yeah, like this morning, got up, locked that in. Uh, you know, I think that line's still there. It's available on a couple other books too, like 18, 19. Maybe it'll go to 20 to 1. I thought about the Mirror Shark money line. Maybe I'll end up playing it if I do. I'll tweet it, but nothing yet. I think Edmund wins, but the line's just too wide. We move on. Michael Morales taking on Neil Magny. Oh, man. It's like I think Morales wins, but again, this line is just ridiculous, man. Like, I bet Magny in his last fight, what was the line? Like, plus 4,300 or something like that? No, it was plus 3,300, but what he is on the round three on t- t- or tomorrow night is 4,380. So I went ahead and bet that. Round three, I think it's the only way he gets a finish is like an exhaustion finish. And I went ahead and bet the money line, man. Six to one. I think Morales wins, but like these lines, it's just people who it's a low level apex card and they just want to do the same amount of parlays they always do. So they're taking the bets that they, or the picks they always think, or that they think are the most confident in, and they're just parlaying them up like they always do. But this is an apex card, a low level fights, and Morales is good, but he ain't proven yet. Give me Magni, six to one, and plus 4380 on the round three prop. We move on. Con Oafley taking on Myron Santos. This is a big stay away fight for me, man. I think Santos wins, but the weight cut issues on the show and then look bad on the scales. He's huge for the division. I think he probably does win. I think he catches him by knockout. I'm going to go with the favorite, but I could not bet this line. Too many red flags. He's he's pretty green himself. Hasn't fought a lot of great guys. I think he's pretty legit, though. Pretty dangerous. I think he probably does find the knockout. We move on. Next fight, Ryan Loder taking on Robert Valentin. I'm on Robert here, but I think the line's pretty accurate. I, I get people on the Loder side. I, maybe it is dogger pass if you're betting because he probably can get the takedowns. We've seen Valentin taken down before. But I think he's got the finish upside. I think he can catch Ryan, knock him out. I'm going to pick Valentin to win, but uh, it is a dog card. So maybe Ryan gets those takedowns, and it is for the Ultimate Fighter finale. So maybe you go ahead and get a boring decision here and then go back to your finishing ways, even though people think, you know, people call him boring, but he does have a lot of finishes or a decent amount of finishes for only seven fights. What does he got, like four? Four of them finishes? Like, you know, uh, it's not it's not terrible, you know? Four of his six wins are finishes. So, uh, you know, low-level guys, but I'm going to go Valentin, but not confident. Line's accurate. We move on. Co-main event. We got Angelil Tabitha Ricci. I like Tabitha Ricci, man. I think she's good. I think she's got the grappling upside, and she is young. She's got the higher ceiling. She's 10 years younger. Like, I get it. Angela Hill's 40, but in these women's weight class, you see some of these older girls still getting it done, and Angela Hill's still been getting it done, especially in these spots. And, you know, I talked about it on my video. I didn't want to lay chalk, even if it was slight chalk, but... You know, the line's coming my way. She's plus 110 now. I was going to bet it, but I'm just going to wait. I think people are going to be betting Ricci. It seems like everybody's on her. I get it. Like, she's got the higher ceiling, and Angela's 40, and she has, she's got the 13 losses, and yada, yada. But I think stylistically she presents problems. I think they're going to play strike a lot on the feet, and I don't think Ricci's got the best takedowns. So if they strike on the feet, I think Hill's a better striker. I think, you know, um, she's shown the, the wrestling and the grappling's improved. Even though she is 39, she's made late improvements in her career. So give me Angela Hill, and I will be betting her. That is a scary thing to say. That Not somebody I look to bet unless she's a big underdog, but I will be looking to do it here. We move on. Main event time. We got Jared Cannon here, Kyle Brow. I wish I could have like a stronger take, man. I I want to bet Jared here because what, whereas I did say... You know, I think Kyle Brow, he's the much bigger, like, frame-wise. And Jared fought a heavyweight, but Brow's huge, man. You see him at the way in. He's got a big frame. He is the younger guy. The guy with all the momentum. The pretty record. The fighting nerds gym. Ooh, MMA Lab's a good gym, too. But fighting nerds, all the momentum. They're killing it right now. I think Brow should be the favorite. But, you know, Jared, especially coming off a loss. He's 40. Where's his head at? You know, it was a ko technically even though you know it was an early stoppage like he did take some damage it hasn't been a ton of time there's some red flags so i do think kyle should be a favorite but i think he honestly should be like minus 175 something like that minus 150 to minus 180 i don't really want to get behind and and fade fighting herds man they're like on my list of just don't fade but you know, it's tempting because Jared, he presents a lot of pride. He got good, good takedown defense, big power, good striking, can go five rounds, throws way more volume than Kyle Brow. Brow's most volume in a fight is like 50 strikes. Cannoneer does that in a round. Like, 
he could easily win a decision here. He could knock him out. So Cannoneer is the value side in my opinion, but I it's hard to pick him. I'm going to take a 52%. Maybe I don't even think minus 170. I think really minus 130. So maybe I really do need to bet this. I'm tempted. I might bet it. I'll tweet it if I do. Plus 220 is just screaming out to me. But he's he's got the red flags, but so does Angela Hill. But uh, this is plus 220. I don't know, man. Ah, it's tough. I'll gun to my head, pick Borrello, but I am just torn in this fight. And I it's telling me, to, everything in me is telling me to bet Jared, but I won't yet. The bets so far, I got uh, Hill, I will be betting, Leonardo, Lontrop, and Nunez, Yontrop, Nunez, Leonardo, and Hill, I will all be betting, but those lines are only going my direction, so I haven't bet those four money lines yet, but I will, I will be betting them. I got Magni on the money line, plus 600, I got Medina on the money line, plus 475, I got Magni round three as well, plus 4380, and I got Mearshark KO, plus 1900. Those are my bets, man, so we got... uh. Four locked in already. Four that will be locked in for sure. Um, I'm tempted on the Mearshark money line. Uh, Kamaska money line maybe a little bit because I do think it's 50-50. And the Jared money line. But I haven't bet those yet. Um, I don't know about those ones yet. That's where my head's at for the fights, man. Like the video. Subscribe. Post notifications. I appreciate you guys a lot. Check out that live stream from the other day. Wager Wars. Doing it every week. If you want to get on the show, hit me up. I'm getting all your favorite cappers in the community. I appreciate y'all.